Hello there, food wishers. How y'all doing? Welcome to another live chat. Let me see if I can improve the lighting here. Is that good? All right, first of all, can we get a sound check? Is the sound okay? Too loud? Too soft? Not that I know how to adjust it, but I am using the uh, you know, Walter Cronkite mic. You kids will have to Google that. He was a uh, broadcaster when we had news broadcasters. Uh, anyway, welcome to another live chat. It's been quite a week. Uh, Michelle and I have officially, sort of, kind of officially moved to Kismet. Um, the process started last Sunday, actually, which is why we didn't do a chat last Sunday. So we're basically a week late, but, you know, better, better late than never. Um, so super busy week, a lot of work. Um, I, you know, you hear how much of a nightmare moving is and, um, you know, it wasn't exactly as bad as people said. Um, we found it to be much, much worse than what we had heard, but anyway, uh, very tired, didn't get a lot of sleep. So, uh, I'm not sure how much, uh, sense I'm going to be making during this chat, which means it'll be pretty much like every other chat. So, uh, at least you got that going for you. Um, Oh yeah, the election's over. That's good. I can just uh, you know tweet about food again. That's that, that'll be a nice change of pace. So uh, yeah, that worked out well for me personally, at least. Sorry, uh, sorry if you're commiserating, but we'll be all, we'll be okay. Everyone's going to be fine. Uh, and without further ado, let's get right into the questions. Since, like I said, I only slept a few hours. Oh, it was also Michelle's birthday yesterday. So everyone that wished us happy birthday or her happy birthday on social media yesterday. Thank you so much. Um, very heartfelt, uh, sincere thanks to all that. And uh, anyway, that's another excuse why we're tired, or at least I'm tired. But like I said, I probably will sound exactly the same. So I don't think you're going to notice any difference um, other than maybe sort of a rambling intro, possibly. All right, let me scroll back up. Welcome to everyone who's already joined. Uh, if you're not a member and you want to participate in the at least the questioning part of the program, just hit the join button. Uh, or even if you're not going to ask a question and are just like, I, I would like to join Chef John's channel and be an official member, uh, just hit the join button. Um, I forget how much it costs. It's hardly anything. You won't even miss it. So uh, and then you'll get to see some inside photos here from Kismet, some videos, some uh, Sneak previews. Oh, we've had a few of those. Um, in fact, I'll give everyone a sneak pre preview right now, just uh, verbally. Um, I tried to do a recipe uh, attempting to stuff stuffing with gravy in muffin form. So an individual Thanksgiving stuffing stuffed with gravy. Um, and it came out surprisingly well. So hopefully that's going to be pulled together into a video. And uh, that will air when I'm uh, when I come back from vacation, uh, which, by the way, I'm on vacation. I never know I'm on vacation because nothing changes. I still have to film and edit and get the videos ready for the next week that I'm not on vacation. But I'm not complaining because we used the extra couple days uh, to help with the move, uh, which was a huge, huge thing. Anyway, here we go. Let's uh, find a actual question. And by the way, the door is open. Michelle's in the other room. You may or may not hear her laugh in the background. Last week, we I figured out a little mystery. I could not figure out why she was laughing at things that weren't funny uh, and not laughing at things that were funny. It's because she had paused her laptop to go answer the door or something. And when she came back and turned it on, she was like five minutes behind us. So she was watching the chat with a delay and that's why she was randomly laughing for no apparent reason. I finally figured it out. Anyway, we've solved that situation. So uh, hopefully that'll be a little more synced up. And yeah, Spacehead74 says, I finally started following Michelle's Instagram. She takes some awesome photos. I agree. Michelle's like the best Instagrammer um, of all the people I know. So Michelle Manfredi is the handle, 1L Michelle. Go follow her on Instagram and or Twitter and enjoy the photos. All right, here we go. Hi, Jim. Hey, everyone. We got all the usual suspects in the chat. Pam, Fishhack, 
All right, I can't name all your names. I shouldn't have started that. Uh, Old Man Muscle White, I'll finish with him. Uh, no Flapper Pie yet, so you can probably log off now. Uh, flapper Pie not happening this week. Um, although Old Man Muscle White has Orzo softly simmering apple pie baking, wearing his Food Wishes t-shirt. Now that's a real fan. I want you all to try to aspire to the Muscle White level of food wishness. Um, hello, Susan from Geneva, Switzerland. Oh, my part of my family is from Geneva, New York. Beautiful little town in Western New York. I got to stop doing this with my hand. Uh, this is a new thing. I don't think I've ever done this. My hand is on the desk. It's very disconcerting. So let me put, pull that down. Um, all right, Michelle, people are wishing you happy birthday, but she's fine. She got enough of that yesterday. Just so you guys can stop. Thank you, Blue Duck. Uh, Niwat Garden Girl, Niwat. Is that an Indian tribe or is that a city? Niwat. Why does that sound familiar? N I W O T. Uh, have I have lots of green tomatoes? Do you do something interesting with them? That's a good question. Uh, I posted a picture to members a few days ago. Uh, we had our first frost and it pretty much devastated everything. Everything went from green to sort of crispy and brown literally overnight. And there are a few green tomatoes hanging on the on the vines. Um, other than a fried green tomato sandwich, or maybe a fried green tomato BLT, or a club sandwich, I don't have a lot of fried green tomato recipes, or, le or green tomato recipes in general. So if you have an incredible green tomato recipe that you'd like to pass along through this chat medium, uh, please do. And did I get confirmation? Is the sound okay? Sounds good. Let me know. I can turn it up or down, I think. Uh, Paul made our Genovese sauce last night, but served it over mashed potatoes. One of the best things I've ever had, he says. That sounds great. I am a mashed potato fiend. Um, people ask, like, what your last meal is. I don't know if I could pick a last meal, but I could certainly pick the side dishes. And mashed potatoes would be the side dish. If not, maybe the whole meal. Anyway, yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, I worked in lots of different, did not peel the carrots. They just put them in this, put them in the stew, the stock, nutrition. Um, the people that make mashed potatoes and put them out. Now, having said that, I'll eat a baked potato with a skin, no problem. But when I want mashed, I don't think they look good. It looks like, because kind of, baby carrots are hard to peel. So if you're if you're talking about big, but if we're talking about full on big carrots, I think I'm going to need you to I'm going to need you to peel those. If only for aesthetic reasons, just appearance wise, it just looks better. So uh, yes, it's wasting some food. So if you're like one of these people, I can't even waste a quarter of an ounce of of carrot peel. Fine, don't peel them. But I think they should be peeled. Uh, it's just mostly like I said appearance. It's just mostly like I said appearances. Um, and if it's a am or messing them up on not commit hardcore right and wrongs in food. That's what I like about it. No one can prove. Heather is posting our cider donuts. I hope you guys try those. Those were really good. Say, has she been from Quebec? I would have said happy birthday, but I'm not. A um, let's see. Yes, Jim, obviously. Why no, I'm kidding. Valerie, happy birthday. Now that's it. There's one happy birthday shout out per live chat. So no. Susan, Michelle does not laugh on command. I have to say something funny. So tweet or at, asking her in the chat to laugh is not going to work, but good try. Derision. Elwin, I need some context. What do you mean? But good try. Derision. Elwin, I need some context. What do you mean? Is Turkey ever better than fine, Angie? Halliday wants to know, um, is Turkey ever better than fine? Fine's good enough for Turkey. What do you mean by that? Is it ever like life changing? No, probably not. Is it ever uh, transcendent? Never had a transcendent Turkey experience. It's not supposed to be. It's not supposed to be that amazing. It's just sort of a centerpiece, kind of a giant, boring sun. And around which all your planets of side dish excellence rotate. 
So that's really, I think, the turkey is just a centerpiece. It's the meat. The real magic of Thanksgiving is the side dishes, the desserts, and you know, people doing the dishes like I can hear Michelle doing. Um, why does it say my connection is unstable? I was just about to talk about that. Apparently, an Ethernet. Great news, if you can still hear this. Um, we're getting an upgrade on the internet this Wednesday, I think. Wednesday or Thursday, can't remember. But we're going from 100 megabyte, whatever that is. MG, there's a bunch of, there's 100 and some little letters after it. And we're going up to 1,000, which is a lot more. It's like 10, which is a lot more. It's like 10, which is a lot more. It's like 10 times. I did that. So um, apparently that's going to solve any of these buffering problems. Uh, I've been told not to move too much. I don't know if this blue screen in the background, the pattern is messing with the computer. But apparently there's been some buffering and some uh, the signal cutting out, and I don't know why. Like I said, I have the fastest connection possible in this setting. So if there are issues, my apologies. Um, what do you want me to do? I'm, I'm trying. I'm going to get some fast internet this week. Um, so they're going to upgrade that and we should be fine. Grape Tomato Girls here, live from San Diego. Hello there. Uh, hold on, I missed some questions. How far in advance can you brine your turkey, Pam wants to know. I don't know. Probably not too far. Otherwise, you're going to end up with uh, corned beef turkey or like turkey pastrami. If you brine something too much, it gets cured and you it'll be like a ham. So if you want turkey ham, go for it. Uh, but if you want turkey ham, you might as well just make ham. So uh, I would say just a couple days. Once it absorbs what it needs to absorb, you're not doing anything other than making it weird texturally, I think. So, uh, yes, Aaron, I know I'm cutting out, but I'm back now, I think. Buffering, yes. See, now I'm getting all the buffering in, uh, in a delay since we were buffering. Uh, Mr. Muscle White has a new question, not related to flapper pie. Uh, Mother used to make buns in a muffin pan where the bottoms were crusty and soaked in cooked butter. Have you heard of this? Would you make them for us, please? Huh. Muffins, bottoms, crusty, soaked in cooked butter. I'm not, I, is that, it sounds like she just made muffins with a lot of, with a lot of butter. Um, so I'm not sure if that's a recipe or a technique. Uh, if you have a name for like super, super buttery muffins, send them along. And everyone is telling me about the buffering, bad buffering. Sound is fine. Haven't had this much buffering since 14.4 dial up, selective misanthrope joked. Uh, dude, the kids don't know what you're talking about, 14.4. I remember those days though. All right, it says the connection is back secure. I have no idea why the connection on an Ethernet would be not secure. Um, I'm still confused by all this. Um, behind this screen is just piles of stuff. So we're not really set up yet. When we are completely set up, then I have no excuse for this stuff. But like I said, Wednesday, fast internet. I think that should be the end of the problems. Uh, but anyway, I'll try to talk slower or something. I don't know. But apparently we're back. Apparently we're back. Uh, Lee Staub uh, tells me for transcendent turkey experience, Kenji's dry brine, dry brined spatch cock turkey, delicious. I would tend to agree. Anything Kenji makes is delicious. I had a problem with Kenji and all the people that are pushing spatch cocks this Thanksgiving. Love the technique, the best technique ever for cooking a bird. But when you spatch cock a big turkey, you're talking about something that's going to be this big. And unless you have a 36-inch oven and a full-size sheet pan, you cannot probably get any decent-sized turkey into your oven. And if you're spatch cocking a turkey the size of a, uh, you know, a chicken, then great. You can do it and put it on a regular half sheet pan. But to do a nice like 15, 18-pound turkey... Um, spatchcock, how are we getting that in our normal home size ovens? Some people were saying, because I asked this question on Twitter, 
Some people were saying, well, cut it in half, put one half on each sheep pan. Of course you could do that. That's not a spatchcock though. That's a half a turkey. That's two half turkeys. I want a spatchcock. I want a spatchcock. All right. I'm not just half spatchcocking or quasi spatchcocking or, you know, pseudo spatchcocking. I want full spatchcock. You got to go full spatchcock. So if you have a tip on how to get an 18 pound turkey spatchcocked, laid out flank, do drop me. And yeah, space had telling us, but no one's going to do that because it's freezing in the middle of who knows what do. A lot of people just don't have one of those. Uh, yes, that is from Whole Foods. Uh, no, they're talking about the Delta, they're talking about the Delta Tory one. Um, yeah, spreads. So they have storm Petaluma, Michelle's me if you're anywhere close. Uh, Marty P, it's just cool to say cock on Thanksgiving 20 times or so. I agree. Make sure you put spatch in front of it, though. Otherwise, people like, why are they in the C word at the, at the dining room table? Spatch. Something really cool in German. Is it German? It sounds German. Uh, Jim wants to know what red what red wine brand people like to put in their stews. I fool if last of it. You should, if it's something you would just hate to not drink the extra glass of because you're going to put some of your... I'm talking about an $8, $10 bottle of wine. Generally, uh, I don't try to obsess over that stuff too much. It's usually just a bottle. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, the brand, don't worry about where they have the screw tops and the stuff to cook with. Paul is bragging. He's grilled with a couple of feet of snow. I slept out one night in, uh, when I was a kid, and we didn't sleep. We just sat around a fire, and it was like four feet of snow. And then the next morning, uh, that we ate the biggest breakfast I've ever eaten in my life. I had six eggs, a half a pound of bacon, and it was like a snack. It was like nothing. So uh, interesting. If you ever want to lose weight, if you got a load of these keto people, uh, Tracy B, do I have any special kitchen equipment that you choose? That are like you might have seen one. It's, see this? That's a toaster. Apparently it works. Once I get set up, we're going to. I can't pull it any farther. The cord stuff. But anyway, um, cool. it's going to look like someone actually designed it. Not really. All my mom's uh, little batches of cap around the kitchen with it, and I was. I didn't get any of that stuff or keep any of that stuff. Um, so now I just use what people assume cooking equipment. To speak of. Sorry about that. I don't know what happens with the buffering. A, a nice spelt flour. For me, it is the most very high fiber. It doesn't taste like it, is the best way to describe it. So if you can find sprouted spelt flour, go buy that and go find our flatbread recipe or our pita recipe and make it with that. You're going to be very, very happy. All right, scrolling down, got to go past the previous buffering complaint. Yeah. He was in California. We're getting some, very, apparently comes from Iraq. Under the odds. Active from, he is telling, related to the noun, when they killed their half and spread them out. Sounds a little barbaric. I'm having flashbacks to uh, Vikings, the show Vikings. Um, you guys watch that? That was pretty brutal. Anyway, thank you for the info. All right, Brian Cooper. Brian Cooper. Whoops, just lost. Oh, sometimes I start a dough by putting flour on the counter, making a well in the center, putting water, incorporate. What's the purpose of that counter technique? <clears throat> well, that's for people like me uh, and many people who don't like to measure stuff when they're doing doughs. So that's very, uh, very common for like pasta making. And the reason or the theory behind it is instead of measuring, you make a well, you make a pile of flour, you put your liquid, your eggs, your water, your whatever, beer, whatever you're going to make your dough with. And then you start incorporating it with your hand in the center. And you pull in enough flour to give you the perfect texture, the perfect consistency. Um, and then you just scrape away the rest and use it for another time. So it's just a matter of having how much you need right there at your fingertips versus trying to measure and then sprinkle a little more in 
and then mix and a little more and then knead and a little more. You just do it all right there. It just looks cool too. Start with a big pile of flour, end up with a dough ball. That's all. Uh, thanks for joining, John. John Hayes is officially a member. Mark it down. November 15th. Hello from San Jose. Hello to you. Pam's going to make our shrimp etouffee next week. I really want to serve in a Louisiana pistolet roll. Pistolet, 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 pistolet. Never ask a question that has a word I don't know how to pronounce, please. Um, apparently that's a Louisiana, is that a poor boy roll? I'm guessing, or is it totally different? I'm going to be, have to be educated now on the uh, pistolet, or it could be let. There's two T's and an E. I don't know how that ends. I, I didn't take French for that. I will research it, and it sounds like something I would probably like to make. So uh, someone will tell me. Uh, have I ever had white asparagus soup? BB wants to know. I've never had white asparagus soup. Does it taste like regular asparagus? Sort of. Um, I've only had white asparagus a few times. <clears throat> and I'll tell you when I had it. There's a very, very extremely old school recipe called <clears throat> veal Oscar. Is anyone old enough to remember veal Oscar? So and I, I barely am going to remember it myself, but it's uh, veal medallions and not like what they call veal nowadays which is like young beef this is back in the day where they put those poor baby cows in like a little box and they never used a muscle it was like butter it was like so tender i mean horrific just like a, a an abomination but delicious and they would sear these fl you'd flour pieces of veal and you'd sear them in butter and then you top that with white asparagus uh, crab meat and a hollandaise and then you broil that over the top it was pretty crazy it was really good um, and that I actually had one time with white asparagus which apparently is the asparagus because the veal is so delicate I mean if you're going to just you know torment a baby animal like that you don't want to cover it up with a green harsh bitter vegetable so the more mild white asparagus um was the pairing there and it really uh it, it really was delicious i'm ashamed to admit we're not supposed to eat that stuff it's bad karma i think um or at least that's what i hear but anyway that's what that reminded me of veal oscar and white asparagus uh brian yes i probably did answer you while it was buffering uh let me get this question again what's the secret to adding rice when making a batch of soup so it doesn't get waterlogged bloated and mushy as it sits in the soup brian there's no way to not have that happen if you add rice to a soup soup and people think the rice was cooked in the soup but it wasn't it was just cooked in chicken broth and then added to that soup at the last second so that's the only trick you can do <clears throat> and, and believe me the restaurants do not like me giving these tips i get many 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 angry letters and emails postcards uh saying hey dude you're giving away all our secrets like that most pumpkin recipes in restaurants are actually butternut squash that's the truth that's a fact all right pumpkin pumpkins really hard to cook with and with and the sugar pumpkins are kind of expensive and uh butternut squash aren't so don't be surprised if that pumpkin custard you had in the restaurant was that it, it was it was butternut squash the ravioli guarantee those pumpkin ravioli were, were butternut squash no doubt the soup forget about it no one's making pumpkin soup in the restaurant that's butternut squash so there you go giving away all the secrets all right let's see here what we got jim's baby turned six months congratulations i think that's what they're talking about i'm trying to keep up on the side convos um, while I'm doing this, it's not always possible. Yes, Jim, I salt my potato water 
actually more strongly than I do for pasta. Speaking of restaurant tricks, by far one of the biggest mistakes people make when cooking potatoes and pasta at home, not nearly enough salt in the water. All right, think about it. Dry pasta, no salt in there, just what they made it with. Uh, if you cook it in a unsalted water, it gets bland. And even if you're putting it in an amazingly flavorful sauce, it's really hard to get it seasoned once it's hydrated. So put a lot of salt in your pasta water. It should literally taste like unflavored soup as far as seasoning. Like when you sip it off a spoon, it should taste seasoned. Um, they say like seawater, but you know who drinks seawater? So that, that's not necessarily a great analogy, but it should be very highly seasoned. When I do potatoes, I even put a little more. Uh, in fact, for fun, if you haven't made it, go find our uh, Syracuse. Shout out to Syracuse. Go Orangeman. Uh, Syracuse salt potatoes, which are potatoes cooked in salted water that's salted so much you can barely get more salt in there. It's like so dense and it raises the temperature of the boiling point. And it makes the most delicious little potatoes. You get the little round, um, the little round uh, yellow or gold ones or white or white potatoes, creamers. <clears throat> and you boil those in that salted water until they're just perfectly tender. Now, you may or may not know this. A potato skin is fairly, uh, what's the right word? Sort of uh, not that porous. A lot of salt does not get in. In fact, very little gets in. It's more that it raises the temperature and the density of the of the cooking liquid. Um, but anyway, you boil them tender, you you pull them out of the salt water, you put them in a basket, and you serve them dipped with clarified butter, just like like eating a lobster. And it is the best potato experience of all time. So, uh, Jim's question reminding me of Syracuse salt potatoes. Please do yourself a favor and go find those. Hold on, I just got a compliment and then I missed it. Uh, okay, cider donuts look great. I don't have a donut pan. Uh, yes, Trey Brosé. Trey Brosé. <laughs> Is that even close? I have no idea on, on these names. I'm sorry. It's not a stick. It's not a gag. I'm just horrendous sounding out things like Trey Brosé. Um, yes, I checked Twitter today and like 10 people made the cider donuts as muffins and it, they look like they came out amazingly well. So uh, yes, Trey Rosé, you should try that. Hey, Sunblast, thank you very much. Uh, Sunblast is allergic to eggs. I can be good with this. I, I don't even need to read any further, but I will. Suggestions for homemade lasagna pasta that won't turn mud, turn into mud in layouts. Try corn flour, didn't like the texture. All right, hold on. You're allergic to eggs, not flour, right? I'm confused. Why would you use corn flour? Use regular flour in water. Or if you've ever had like those big flat noodles in an Asian restaurant, there's no egg in those. They make those with water. You can make a nice, in fact, I think there's Sicilian pastas that's made with water. Am I crazy? Did I dream this? You can make pasta with water. Michelle says yes. See? So um, I'm confused why you, about the corn flour. So, yes, the corn flour is not going to make a nice pasta. There's no gluten in corn flour. That's why you didn't like the texture. Use regular flour. Use water. Uh, there are egg substitutes. I've never used them. So maybe, you, you know, you could try those, but you're on your own there. Um, but, yeah, I'm confused a little bit by the corn flour. Allergic to eggs, no problem. You don't need eggs. You just need liquid to make pasta with. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for joining. Grape Tomato Girl search for a New England clam chowder recipe. Yes, we have. We've done clam chowder. And the reason I know this is because I have a great friend who I've only met once named Tamar who lives on Cape Cod or in New England. I think it's Cape Cod, <clears throat> somewhere near there, <clears throat> who thinks it's insane to put clam shells in a clam chowder. And I think it's insane not to. I think they add some minerality to the flavor. I also think they look super cool. And then people can tell you use fresh clams. 
So I know we have a clam chowder recipe on the channel. I can't find it for you now, but it's there. John Hayes, can you answer again about anchovy paste and puttanesca? Uh, he missed it because of the damn buffering. Hopefully that's all been cleared up. Uh, anchovy paste and puttanesca works beautifully. No problem there. Uh, the anchovy has no idea if it's in a whole or paste form. Throw it in there. In fact, when you put a whole anchovy in puttanesca, by the time you're done with the sauce, it's paste. It's been pasted. All right, so don't worry about that. Uh, Pam is explaining what those rolls are from Louisiana, um, except she didn't spell it out phonetically, so I'm still not sure how it's pronounced. They're super light with a very thin, crispy crust. Kind of chewy inside. Dreamy. Only had them once, haven't stopped thinking about them. Well, that's a good sign. When you have something once and you think about it your whole life, those are the recipes I want to film. So someone send me more info about these pistolet rolls, pistolet, pistolette. I don't know. Trip from reality made the ziti today. It's my new favorite. Thanks. Very good. Big ziti, perfect season, perfect weather for big ziti. All right. We're into cash roll season. You got to make that one. People are uh, seconding seconding the suggestion for the Syracuse salt potatoes. Um, Sunblast says, regular flour turns to mud. I don't know. I'm confused. Uh, I've made pasta with just water, uh, like spaghetti, noodle, flat noodles, linguine type, fettuccine type shapes, and it blanches fine, and I don't know. So I'm sorry. I wish I could help you. I feel bad. You actually paid two seventy nine to ask that second follow up part. Um, but I know there are eggless pastas in the store. I've seen them, and they, I don't think they all fall apart. So uh, I'm a little, I'm a little confused by that. I'd have to watch you make it. I guess see what you're doing. <clears throat> and then Nick Sturge, Sturge, uh, didn't know if he missed the answer. Uh, the types of fish for sea bass a la Michelle. I went on a very long diatribe that you have to find sea bass because it's called sea bass a la Michelle. But any thick, white, flaky fish will work. I'm thinking like a halibut or an extra thick piece of cod would also work. Haddock, as they call it some places, um, that would work too. If you live in haddock land, which I remember very well from living in western New York, all the Friday fish fries are done with haddock. That will work. <clears throat> Old Man Muscle White is laughing at minerality for some reason. Why, why is that so funny? You didn't think I knew that, that word, did you? Uh, BB wants to know, how do you decide what to make a video recipe on? Michelle tells me which, which, what I should do. So that's usually how it goes. She reads all the requests and says, you know what, would so know what sounds good? Some cider donuts. And then I do them. So basically, we just listen to you folks. It's called Food Wishes. People wish for food on the channel, on Twitter, <clears throat> underneath the, you know, in the, underneath the video in the comments. It's not all just, you know, insightful back and forth. It's sometimes people are making requests. That's like one of the better places to do it. And if you can find me on Twitter, which you really should, uh, I do take requests there. Although I don't feel bad if I don't answer you directly. I might just like your request. That means, yeah, I might try that. <clears throat> Thanks, James. Uh, Jamie Musselwhite's mom's bun dinner rolls with a crusty butter bottom. So are we talking about Parker House rolls? Is it possible Jamie's talking about Parker House rolls? Those have a lot of butter and can get crusty on the bottom. Yes, Jim, celery salt. You can substitute with celery seed and salt. Uh, put them together in a mortar and pestle, crush them, and I believe that's how you make celery salt. Um Please consult Google for further info, but I believe that's how it's done. 
That's been my understanding. Uh, people that ask their questions during buffer the buffering phase of the show, which if you missed it, too bad. That was one of the better po points of the of the chat. Um, Tuana Chicken Hecka. I've never, I've never heard of it. I'm gonna Google it. It sounds hecka good. I would like to eat chicken hecka. Hecka, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out. It just sounds like something I would enjoy. Babish Culinary Universe joined. Oh my God. Is this is this a real account? Is this someone that's posing as Andrew? Hello, Babish Culinary Universe. Does this mean I have to join your channel now? I'm not sure I can afford it. Hey, Chef. How you doing? I hope you're well. I'm well. Oh my God. Babish is in the chat. Now you all can berate him about when our collab is going to happen. And Instead of just asking me nonstop for the last three years. Uh, okay, apparently he said, yeah, dude. So that's him. No one else knows that's what people call me. Um, hey, Andrew, hope you're well. You're the man. Uh, for those who don't know, Bab uh, Binging with Babish, uh, Andrew Ray, he has usurped me as the most lovable chef on YouTube. Uh, also from real New York. I'm from Western New York, does both count. Um, but anyway, quite an honor to have Andrew in the chat. Although I'm assuming this is one of his interns and he, he's probably off doing something fabulous. But anyway, whichever intern is manning the social media for uh, Babbage, Babbage Culinary Universe, I appreciate it. He, uh, he says, ha ha, no, it's me, which is exactly what an intern would say who was trying to convince us he's here. By the way, he's way too huge of a star for this chat. So I'm I'm skeptical. If it is you, Andrew, I appreciate it. Uh, you do amazing work. And don't tell the other food foodies on YouTube, but uh, one of the one of the few rare examples of other content I will make time to watch is a binging with Babish video. When I recognize the show he's talking about which is not always the case. Also, let me give an unsolicited plug. One of the most gorgeous cookbooks I've seen in many, many, many years uh, is Andrew Ray's cookbook. Go find it. I actually wrote a little thingy in there, uh, which I, I'm assuming helped, uh, you know, vault it to number one on New York Times bestselling list. I didn't look. I just assumed it was number one. Anyway, thank you for joining the chat. Uh, um, and very uh, smart of you to wait until the buffering was over. Uh, in fact, I, I got to get together with Andrew so he can show me how to do because I've seen some of his live things and they look the word. They looked uh, professional. So that would be nice one of these days. Oh, that's right. You are from Western New York, but you moved to the good part of New York. So, so you, uh, the best of both worlds from Western New York, and then moved to, was it Brooklyn, New York City, to do your thing? Anyway, very, very, very cool to have you aboard. Michelle says you just bought ice. Well, I hope so. Jeez. By the, uh, the celebrity drop in here. Uh, Abner's doing chicken tiki masala real time. <clears throat> you don't cut up chicken after, you don't cut up chicken after marinade. You always say the more surface area, the better. That's true. You got me. I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and watch that video to see what I was thinking. <clears throat> but I always don't have reason to do things. This is a myth with chefs and people in general. Sometimes people just do things for no apparent reason. And then they do it a different way the next time. Uh, cooking is like that. <clears throat> Sometimes I put a towel over the dough. Sometimes I put plastic over the dough. Sometimes I don't cover the dough. Sometimes it's foil. Sometimes it's just in a closed oven. Um, and, and I'll do it different every time, and I don't know why I'm doing it. So that's sort of what I like to uh, – that's sort of how I like to cook. Hold on. Michelle's creeping in here for some reason. No, I have lots of water. Thank you. Try to bring me water. See, that's a good wife. Never let your spouse get dehydrated.
Uh, Ryan has a question about making bone sauce. Every time I start out with my base, bones, mirepoix, bouquet garni, and let it simmer, it ends up smelling like wet dog. No idea. No idea what I'm doing wrong. Ryan, I don't know either. Um, smell like wet dog. That is simply the smell of the bones cooking. Uh, that's normal. Open some windows, put a fan on. It actually will dissipate. Nothing to be, uh, no, nothing to be uh, alarmed about. That is just the proteins, the collagen uh, boiling down. That is as scientific as I'm going to get because I don't really know any science about it. Um, what's that book by McGee? You could read that. Probably explain. Um, Andrew probably knows if he wants it. If he wants to chime in. So uh, that I'm not sure. Uh, if it doesn't taste like wet dog, I think we're okay. That's where I would draw the line. I am okay if it smells like wet dog a little bit, uh, but nothing to be nothing to be alarmed about. Harold McGee, apparently my wife is telling me, just wrote a book about smells. This counts. So you can stop bugging us now. Although when Andrew comes out here, which I really hope he's going to fly out here soon to see Kismet, we are 100% going to film something, whether he wants to or not. Um, so that's that has to happen. And when and if I ever get to New York, which really I'd love to go, I got family there, my long lost aunts and uncles and sisters and brother-in-laws and nieces um i really and nephews great nephews apparently now uh, i need to get back to that east coast area some point before it's, you know too too many years go by but i have a feeling maybe andrew makes his way out here before i get back east and if that happens we are, we have to we're going to hook up and do something I'm scrolling back up, see how many questions I missed uh, when I got starstruck by Andrew joining the chat. I'm the doctor. Oh, wait, no, not doctor. I'm the Robert Frost of getting lost. Yes, Grape Tomato Girl, I'm suspect too. Buffering before Babish joins, Great connection while he was down here, buffering when he leaves. Yes. Might have been doing something there. Closed Michelle closed her laptop. She's taking credit. Uh, we buffering again. We got five minutes to go and we're going to buffer again. That's terrible. Uh, anyway, if I missed your questions because of buffering, this will theoretically be the last buffering live chat ever. Because I don't know, I've never used a thousand, whatever they are, MBs, uh, MBGs, and megabytes of data. Sounds like a lot. But I get a thousand of those. And apparently it's going to be 10 times better, but 10 times left, less buffering than what we have now. <clears throat> Brian, I've always tended to use a large serrated knife for cutting fruits and veggies. I rarely see anyone in restaurants doing this. Wow, I'm glad you asked this question. I am a huge proponent of serrated knives. For things like tomatoes, uh, bell peppers, things that have a tough skin, I have no problem using a serrated knife. They don't use them in restaurants. I, I think it's a, more of a, you don't want to look like an amateur. I mean, when I was in a restaurant, I used a French knife which of course is a pro we're always supposed to keep razor sharp. And if your French knife is razor sharp, you can use it to cut all those veggie veggies I just mentioned, but in the home setting, you're slicing some tomato, use a serrated knife. Um, like I said, peppers is another good thing. Um, what's that? Persimmons. Yes. Any kind of fruit with a tough skin, uh, a serrated knife does a great job. So yeah, you don't see a pro use them. Because I think they're afraid of looking like a home cook. It's like one of the professional chef's great fears. I don't understand why. But they don't want to look like a home chef. Even though most of them, you know, are basically glorified home chefs. So uh, anyway, 
that's my answer. Uh, not it's not very you know, not very scientific, but Chef John Kenji and Babish episode trifecta. Yes, that would be wild. Um, if I could get those two guys on a video, I, I could just retire. <clears throat> Lee Stub, Stube, Stub, Stube. What's your favorite tool for keeping your knife honed sharp in between taking it in? Just a regular knife steel. Just a regular knife steel. Um, Sarah wants to know, I'd love to see you make Aussie style meat pie. I will have to Google that. I'm guessing, is that similar to like a, a pasty, like a British or Irish pie, meat pie? Is that what it is? Cornish? Is it like a Cornish pie? I find all the meat pies of the world very similar in that they're all amazing and delicious. Um, so yes, I will, I will Google Aussie style meat pie and I will pair it with Foster's because that's my most favorite Australian cliche is that apparently they drink Foster's with everything, but I have a feeling it's probably like the Budweiser of Australia and no real beer drinkers drink it. Um, is I just wildly guess about your country? No idea. Uh, Char, the persimmons we just eat raw. They're the, those style, the fuyu style. Even though these were fuyu, but they were the same style. The ones you can eat crisp and firm. Just slice them, eat them like a piece of fruit. That's the best way. They're so sweet and so juicy, and have such a just hard to describe the flavor of a persimmon. But even if you've never had it before, it is very, very familiar. It's it's sweet, but not too sweet. Um, it has the texture of like a super, super firm peach, sort of. Has that kind of sticky juiciness, uh, but very firm, crisp, sweet, delicious. Go get some Fuyu persimmons. Do not, under any circumstance, eat the, what is it, Michelle? It, start, it starts with an H. It's a Japanese word. Yeah, exactly. All right. Michelle doesn't know it either. We, I forgot it. Hayacha? Hacha? Uh, the pear-shaped or plum-shaped ones have to be super soft before you can eat them. Otherwise, your mouth will dry out. You will not be able to taste anything for like 15 minutes. Yeah, the, the round, flat ones are the ones you can eat firm. Yes, Jim, when things get better, I want to try Kenji's restaurant in Belmont too. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Roxanne wants to know $2. Can I do a video for free marinara? I definitely cannot do that since that is the main ingredient. So yeah, you'd have to do like a cream sauce. There's no such thing as a tomato-free marinara. Having said that, though, because you did pay two dollars to ask that, maybe just maybe. Now, don't quote me on this. Maybe we use some red pepper, roasted red pepper, and we do a puree out of that with onion and garlic and herbs and olive oil and all the same chovy, all the same deliciousness, and we just use a red pepper instead of a tomato maybe maybe we maybe we get by with that um oh sarah yes frosters is cheap stuff we export so you send us your crappy beer what, what so what am i supposed to be drinking uh excellent aussie beer is four pines from manly beach well if it's from Manly Beach, you know it's going to be good beer. And Cooper's from Adnell, Adelaide Day, Adelaide. I've seen both at Bevmo. All right, I'll check them out. Jim loves an ice cold Foster's. Jim, did you not just read that? That's what they send. That's crap. They send to us. Stop drinking that. All right, now I want beer and. What else? Chicken tiki masala. See, these chats make me hungry because I forget about recipes. 
Anyway, oh my God, we're over time already. Sorry, I got distracted. It was quite the eventful chat. Uh, we had buffering. We had babishing. We had Kenji references. We always have a few of those. Um, and it just went so fast. Let me have a drink of water. I'm parched. It went so fast. <clears throat> I'll stay on a few minutes because of the buffering. If you got screwed over because of the buffering, ask your question now. Uh, Verithane man, I, Van Van the man. I'm just adding syllables to people's names. Thank you, Van the man. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, everybody. You make these chats so much fun. I assume they're way more fun for me than anybody else, which is fine. Um, <clears throat> every to Dumpling Time, San Francisco, large car, Ken. How big is your car, by the way? What are you driving? Uh, I've never eaten at Dumpling Time, San Francisco. I've eaten at Dumpling Space, but never at Dumpling Time. All right, come on. Who's got a who's got a buffering question that they asked during buffering, and then all I did was break up, and then for the next ten minutes talked about buffering. Hit me with a question. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to start my long, drawn out outro, as we call it in the business, where I say goodbye, but really slowly and awkwardly. Because I've yet to do, uh, develop a beautiful, neat ending to these lots. <clears throat> it doesn't seem fair to use the and as always enjoy, even though I've done that a few times. Um, so basically, I just kind of trail off and then I hit the button and then it just stops. <laughs> Start that process. Uh, I appreciate all the support. Members, welcome aboard. All the existing men members still hanging in there. Thank you so much. It means a lot, uh, especially this week when we moved up here. Very emotional, uh, or at least that's why I tell. And last week, uh, we started moving the big stuff. And the middle of a few days ago was the official giant moving van day, uh, which I posted that little quick video of. The truck could not get under the sign at the gate. So the poor guys had a use a van to shuttle everything to the house but they were amazing uh what was the name of the company one big man one big truck uh if you're ever in san francisco and need a mover uh they did charge me so this is not a this is not like a free plug because they they you know spotted me uh we paid full price and they were awesome but anyway uh Trey Roger wants to know pumpkin pie, canned pumpkin or homemade. Always use canned pumpkin puree for your pies. Do not try to roast your own pumpkin for pies. Don't buy the pre-spiced one. And do not buy the pre-spiced one, Michelle says. Buy pure pumpkin in the can. It's specially made from pumpkins that are sort of sweet. Or, no, not kidding here, use kabocha squash or butternut squash and use that for your pumpkin pie. If you do want to use a fresh gourd, um, that's not a dumb idea. Otherwise, do not try to make your own homemade pumpkin puree because it's always going to be more watery and less sweet than the canned stuff, I believe, in my heart of hearts. All right, that's it. We're done. Thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Um, I'm on vacation. That's why there was no video on Friday. There will not be any video on Tuesday uh, in two days. But Friday, there will be a brand new video. And I'm really hoping it's going to be the country gravy stuff, stuff and muffins, where we use muffins. We made muffins out of stuff and, and then we stuff the stuff and in the muffins, we stuff that with something, which is gravy. So stay tuned for that. Uh, in the meantime, like I said, have a great rest of the day. And as always, enjoy. I'll just go with that until I come up with something appropriate for the ending. Have a great one. Stay safe. Wear a mask. Seriously. This is no joke. Uh, social distance. Do not kill your families this holiday. Uh, be smart. But most of all, have fun. And like I said, and as always, enjoy. Here we go. I'm going to end stream. Hitting the button. Bye. Whoops. I got to hit another button. Here we go.